Olá pessoal, estou aqui com o Gary Muzinski, ele é um especialista em desenvolvimento organizacional que une a questão da música, a neurociência e o tocar instrumentos como uma forma e uma estratégia de desenvolvimento. Eu sou o Wagner Cassimiro e este é o Expresso 3. Gary, could you explain me the relationship between music and organizational development? Sure. So I use music as both a metaphor, metaphora, and an actual embodied experience. So there are five principles that I learned from, so as an organizational development consultant, as a musician, as someone who's also studied the brain and neuroscience, I discovered that there are five principles in music making that can be applied to organizations. First principle is listen listening at three levels, to self, to other in conversation, and to the larger system. That could be a room, it could be an organization. So listen at three level. Principle two is synchronize your team. So the principle of synchronization is something you find in music, whether it's in samba or pagogi or MPB or rock and roll or whatever, right? Synchronization, the rhythm, is key to the aliveness of the music and the ability to move people, which means to motivate them, something business is also interested in. So synchronization is key. How do you synchronize a group of people around a common vision or set of values, which in the workplace we call alignment? In music, we call it syncing up with the beat, right? Or the groove, right? So. Um, principle number three is being able to orchestrate. Now we might think of a classical conductor. So a leader on a large team or in an organization needs to be able to orchestrate outcomes. They, get, they need to get results. They need to do that by inspiring their people, by sharing stories so they, uh, people understand who they are authentically, you know, both in terms of the mistakes they've made as well as successes. We, we relate and want to follow people who don't seem perfect, you know, who are like us, who are struggling, who are learning. So when a leader can communicate that, it creates a better bond. But it's an act of orchestration. Um, they're not trying to micromanage people, but just like a classical orchestra or a music producer, um, they're listening to the big picture They're making sure that the right people are in the right roles. Um, so recruiting is important, managing and developing talent, um, listening to the big picture. All of those skills from a big band jazz person or from a classical conductor are great inspiration for what orchestration means. So principle four is collaborate with your team. So that means as a leader, I want to facilitate and coach rather than tell you what to do. Because I want your creativity. I want you to be involved. I want you to stay in this organization. So I need to involve you. I need to give you room to grow, experiment, fail, learn. So collaboration, you see it in music, that there's a lot of give and take. Even if there's a clear band leader, you know, if you hear great Brazilian music, um, like I got to hear Hermeto Pascual recently in concert, one of the great Brazilian jazz artists. And he's continually playing and co-creating with his group. And um, it's just amazing what they can achieve. And then finally, improvisação. Improvisation is really key because no matter how much we plan in life, and you know, businesses like metrics, they like data, they like to predict outcomes, But life, as you know, is very uncertain, especially the world we live in today. So you need to be able to adapt, you need to be able to use your intuition, and you need to be able to change very quickly. Now I'd like to listen a short case that you can show this in practice. Sure. So I worked with a chief executive officer at Bank of America for a couple years. And what was unusual about the work is they brought in a consulting company. First of all, their need was that they wanted to transform 
their division from a $70 million organization to a $150 million organization in two years. And it was e-commerce. At the beginning of e-commerce, it was a very flat growth business. And when I spoke to the chief executive of that division, I said, what do you see as the barriers to your success? What's stopping you from reaching that goal? He said, well, one of the key things is that my entire leadership team does not believe we can do it. They're in a mood of despair. They, they're not confident about the future. They don't think it's a realistic goal. And he said to me, so I need an experience that demonstrates louder than any words that we could do this, that if we have the right mindset, that if we believe in ourselves, that we have the skills, we have the capability, we have the creativity. And in 2010, IBM did a global study of the top 1,700 CEOs in seven different, 13 different industries, 25 different countries. And the top thing that the CEOs said they needed in their leadership was creativity. Yeah. It wasn't business acumen, it wasn't con customer intimacy, it wasn't supply chain mojo, it was creativity. So that was the business need. And he experienced our work uh, at Eastman Kodak a few years before that when they were trying to change their culture from um, analog film, which was their bread and butter, to digital, you know, when Fuji was eating their lunch. So he said, I need something to really shake up my people that will be very bold and will really demonstrate to them that how key their mindset is. So that's one of the specialties of our work at Orchestrating Excellence is shifting people's mindset. So now what we did is we started with a leadership development program for four hours, half day, with the top 120 leaders in his division. And we used samba music from Brazil um, to transform them into a very precise sounding batucada orchestra. So you have these North American leaders having no idea what samba is, learning to play the surdo, the agogo, the tamborim, the afoche, uh, the cuica, um, the ganza, all these things in different sections, like different business units. And first, they sound terrible, <laughs> right? And we just play for them as professionals and kind of show off the breaks and everything. And we ask them, how many of you think you can achieve this level of precision and quality in four hours? Now, Wagner, imagine yourself in their situation. How many, what percentage of the audience do you think said, yes, this is possible, we can do it? What percentage? I really don't know. <laughs> Guess. Mm, in the beginning, no one. Five percent. Five percent. Five percent is typical. Even with the brightest, the best, even top grossing salespeople, five percent. Because we want to set it up like it seems impossible. Yeah. How can, you know, these North American gringos learn to play samba in four hours when, you know, in Rio in the Escola de Samba, it takes, you know, it's a nine month process. And they haven't been playing it since they were little kids. So, so we asked them, what do you think are the barriers to your success? And they say, it's not a realistic goal. Um, we don't have the time, we don't have the talent. There's no alcohol in the room. We're all engineers. And then we asked them, if this miracle were to occur in the next four hours, what would have to happen? What are our, our conditions for success? And then we flip chart both. And they'll, for conditions for success, they'll say, clear leadership, good training, role clarity, the ability to make mistakes and learn, um, fun, creativity, et cetera. So now we have our change journey. We have a map of our current reality, psychology, and desired future state. So this is no longer about playing samba. 
It's no longer about getting them to sound like a cohesive orchestra. It's about the psychological change of putting them into a very awkward and vulnerable place of learning about something they don't know about, where they have no skills, where I'm giving them very high standards in a very short period of time to induce stress. Okay, wonderful case. And oh, so the impact of this work, we did it five times through the organizations with different leadership groups, was to completely transform their thinking about their goals and their business. And within two years, they grew the business from 70 million to 170 million. And there's a case study about it on our website. Okay. So. Muito obrigado. Meu prazer.